and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we're not Facebook living this because apparently Facebook hates Carla. They and hate I don't me. have it. I got BAM. And I don't have the app on my phone and refuse to put the app on my phone and I didn't bring my laptop. So we're going to have to do this just on TV and we'll do it on YouTube and upload that because as of yet they haven't. And shut to down Library that. and Odyssey yeah. and BitChute and, all you know, all places. the other things platforms yeah. that we now have to create yeah. like uh underground people you know tammy i grew up in apartheid south africa i know which was a police state and i have to say i am horrified to see us moving in that mm. direction everything you know discussions are being pushed underground i mean i was in college i remember like if you wanted to go to a mixed race party yeah. it was like an underground you club to you had to you know yeah. you, code words and secret addresses and this was before social media so like you had really to tricky, you know right. like it was you know here's a teller you we're know? going golfing yeah so um i got suspended for 30 days i have no idea why i think it was because i shared one photo from uh, the capital it didn't depict violence at all it was an aerial shot of tens of thousands possibly hundreds of thousands of people it was from someone who was there someone else had shared it i shared it and said wow i had no idea for that apparently i got caught up in this mass ban that you know has caught up people like former presidential candidate ron, ron paul. paul i mean who bans ron who literally paul? platform is peace, peace. Which I would say is also my platform in case people are getting confused because apparently people are getting confused. Um, so it's a 30 day ban. I can't uh, send messages. I can't work on any of my pages. I own at least 21 pages. I don't have admin, extra admins for all of yeah. them. So, I mean, in some ways it's been a good learning lesson. I'm now on MeWe. Yeah, I, um, I signed Minds. up. I was on Parler for two days before. They banned the, Parler. Well, that's something that people have to really think about whether they're okay with. And if you're not, if you are okay with it, why is that? So Parler, for those who don't know, because, you know, why would we know? Parler's like, uh, was a, um, a counter to Twitter because people felt that Twitter was restricting um, who could say what. Look, let's just clarify. It's not that people feel. No, I'm just it's saying. They happening. were, but let's just say, <laughs> let, even if it, even if they just felt it. So parlor, because there's a, it's okay to have competition. So there was this parlor app. Well, it's not okay but now, when you are, you know, right. monopolistic. Right. So parlor was hosting their, you know, this all takes stuff behind the scenes that we all don't see on our phone. Was using AWS, which is um, Amazon Web Services. That's where they were hosting. Their cloud host, that's yeah. where they, that's where you know it ran. Well, Amazon decided, well, no, we're, we don't want Parler on using our, our servers. So Parler then was going to go to other vendors that they use, except for they've been apparently blackballed and all of their vendors have refused to let them exist. So, you know, this is actually, I mean, what we're seeing is what happens when government's too big and corporations are too big and governments and corporations start to yeah. collude, right? Um, because in a truly free market, meaning that no one gets to say what, you know, it's like, well, you, you're entitled to your opinion. Exactly. Uh, it's also, of course, within that combination, the whole free speech yeah. issue, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a phone call yesterday. I got a phone call from an AP reporter um, who was calling. I had never worked with him before. Mm. He left me a voicemail. It was extremely garbled. Um, I called him back. I was like, hi, I saw you called. Who are you? He's like, hi, I'm a reporter from the AP. Uh, I know you've been going to some of these uh, these rallies, uh, you know, reopen, that yep. kind of stuff. So can you tell me where the armed protests are planned <laughs> for the 50 states? What is wrong with and the And I world? was like, first of all, I don't know who you are, so I don't know why you're calling me and asking right. me these questions. Why, what, what, uh, Second of all... I don't know because I got banned off Facebook. So, um, and and I should say I'm suspended for 30 days. Uh, but you know, I'm definitely going to be moving my stuff elsewhere. And then, um, and then you know, we got talking a little bit, and and you know, he he had a bit of a tone, and I think I started to take a bit of a tone too. Uh, you know, and I was like, well, you know, who are you? And he's like, well, you know, now no one wants to tell me anything, and I'm like. Big surprise. Well, I mean, you know, we're getting maligned 
uh, misrepresented yep. in the media, you know, f- fake news, you know. So at some stage, it's like, what is it worth? Well, what what's strange you guys? Is... You're a bunch of liars, liars, pants on fire. <laughs> so what I found peculiar, I, well, I said, I said, well, let's do something else first. Yeah, we never get into that. <laughs> so I find I, I am actually I find, I have de- decided an incredibly rational person, you know, and I. People think I'm a hothead. People think I'm opinionated, which I am. I do have, you know, I get frustrated easily and I do have strong opinions. However, most of the time, whether it's on the right end of the spectrum or the left end of the spectrum, when somebody posts something that just seems a little hard, you know, like remotely, like, well, that's odd. I always click on it, read through, see what it is. Usually find myself saying, yeah, you're just nuts. You know, like on both ends. But I take the time to actually try to have some sort of basis for my opinion. I can have a very strong opinion, but it's usually just based on something other than what they read on Facebook or what I saw on the news. So in the last couple of days, I feel like I'm just having conversations with people saying they're talking about, and I'll be honest, I'm going to say this and I say this not because I have insider information or a part of a militia or any conspiracy or anything. Trust me, if that was an armed insurgency or if those were domestic terrorists um, in an act of sedition, that is not what it will look like. No. Running in with Trump flags. Think about it. If you were going to take over Congress, do you think your weapon of choice would be a political flag or a pair of horns <laughs> on a furry or horn. Exactly. Or, or, or a dude on. in a furry costume with a buffalo. Yeah, like, you know. like, realistically, what do I think? Happened? Although, I will say this. I don't know what that dude, I can't figure out if he's I think actually he's just like, an an, actor. A, like a BLM and Tifa kind of dude. Paid he's actor. definitely been in other places. But I, I, I mean... Say what you want about the last week. The memes have oh been off the charts. So that guy, I mean, forever will be the gift that keeps on giving. But one of my favorites was, you know who Vermin Supreme yes, is, I right? Do. So Vermin Supreme is the guy with, with the, the boot. boot on his hat. He's been doing performance art. Uh, you know, trying to sort of yeah. shine a, l- a light on the ridiculousness of the system for over 20 years. I mean, he's gotten to the stage yeah. where people are taking him seriously. Right, right. He kind of legitimately, like, put his hat hat <laughs> in the ring uh, for the Libertarian Party this last session. And so one of the memes I saw was like, well, you know, at least now there's a guy who makes vermin supreme look seem normal. See, thanks. There's always things. Um, uh, the pluses. But so words matter. So I do. do think it's important to unpack a couple of things here. First of all, the term sedition and insurrection mean things. So for the media to suddenly start throwing that around uh, very consistently, you're seeing it in every single article, is them manipulating you. So that is really just something for everyone to... Well, so this morning I said to Dan, because Dan's smart, you know, and I always say, so what do you... So Dan has two brothers. They are on complete opposite ends of the political spectrum. Like, (laughs) they can't be any farther apart. And his whole family is all in disarray. And we're discussing that. And I said, I'm struggling because I'm having discussed or attempting to have discussions with otherwise very intelligent people who are reading words and seeing like bizarre, like taking the house is red and saying, you're calling for the fire department to burn your house down. And you're like, what? And like things that I can't wrap my head around how you could possibly discern as an intelligent person. And Dan looked at me and he goes, moral panic. And I haven't used that term recently. And I was like, moral panic. I had forgotten about moral panic. So I did Google because I'm like, okay, what exactly is moral panic? Moral panic is a feeling of fear spread among people that some evil threatens the well-being of society. It is the process of arousing social concern over an issue, usually the work of moral entrepreneurs in the mass media. Yes, because that is gonna... exactly 
what is happening. That is exactly, and this is not a new term. For those of you who say, well, that's just something. No, no, moral panic, this is a discussion from the 60s because they were trying to understand why people, there was a counterculture against young people. Like, what is going on? Why is everybody, it's probably the same with the reefer madness time. Like, why is this here? Because moral panic. Right, and, and so the word that jumped out for me there was actually spread. And that's the thing that I want folks back home to really stop and think about. Who are you consuming your news from? Um, and what are you doing with what they're sort of bombarding you with? I mean, for me, I find it, you know, laughable that now everyone's focus just, you know, like- There's no more COVID. Like, there's no more COVID and, you know, that's that sort of moved on. Um, but, you know, the, these words, you know, because amongst other things, you know, having been actually accused of being a domestic terrorist now, you know, 2013 that happened, <laughs> you know, uh, here we are domestic back in 20, that really 20, I was really disappointed. And, you know, and, and now I see that term being bandied about by people like Chris Sununu. Right. I was and, very disappointed. And I'm like, you know that. what, this is not right. And, uh, you know, let's stop with the big lies. Uh, what a big lie is, is when the media and who, what was that? The moral, the moral entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs and the, the media. So those the are the people who people. are trying to influence you, right? Um, when they start throwing these terms around and pointing at other people to get the attention right. of themselves, perhaps, right. then you have to really stop and listen. So I was at the rally at Chris Sununu's inauguration yeah. uh, last I week. I saw a couple pictures, seemed like. Um, you know, there were 150, 200 yeah. people, 100% yeah. peaceful. People spoke, people sang. Yeah. Uh, there was a fairly significant state trooper police uh, presence. I gave a little speech uh, all about peaceful, 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 yeah. peaceful. So, you know. So, uh, you, know, you know, if you're like Gandhi and Nelson Mandela and people are calling you a domestic terrorist, yeah, then are you maybe just the freedom fighter that's actually trying to keep the individuals in the world free because everyone else is trying to so control you? a lot of the discussion that I notice is people, I mean, I, and I think there is a legitimate comparison to be made because people are trying to say that Donald Trump's speech on Wednesday incited violence and called for violence and all this stuff, which it didn't. But okay. Somebody, that's what, I watched it semi unfold. I came home, I happened to turn the TV on and I was like, oh, what the hell is happening? Like what in the, I knew there were a bunch, you know, people going to DC for a protest, whatever. Like we do, it happens all the time. And, and, and they that, showed the footage of the 300,000 people uh, walking down the boulevard no, sing, singing God bless no, America, right? Because no, the media showed no, you that. No, only thing I- the, Did the media show you where the police opened the doors no, to the Capitol where the people so, came in? No. The things that I've, you know, you start watching and I literally, if I had thought that this was an overtaking of the government, trust me, I would have been watching. We would have been like, Dan would have brought his laptop down. We would have been watching TV. I was just like, oh, some Yahoo's got out of control. at the pro Right. That's literally right. where it was. Right. And off I went. And to that do my is thing. something. And then it started bubbling. And I was like, what the heck happened? So when you read about it, because they talk about sedition and the damage and they they terrorize the building. And yes, uh, I'm not discounting the fact that a police officer was killed because that's, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, those people should be held accountable. You can't kill other people anytime. But and also the police officer who killed, killed somebody else. And if that was should also be held liable. Right. Same I mean. standard for so, both sides. So I looked and I was trying this morning Googling because I'm like, so what damage? Because I saw a picture of some guy holding the podium that Pelosi speaks at and all this stuff. So I Googled to try to see, because if there was all this crazy damage in this, you know, takeover of government and this armed, you know, sedition or whatever it was where people weren't armed, um, the pictures are all like, there's an office and there's papers strewn about. And then there was a sign outside of Pelosi's office that's been damaged. And there were some broken windows, but there wasn't like, it wasn't like somebody set the Capitol building on fire. Now, in contrast to that, Let's think back. I know it's a long time in the past. Oh, the peaceful well, let's go protests back to the peaceful over protests the summer. over the summer. That, um, yeah, Kenosha, Wisconsin had fifty million dollars in damage. A hundred businesses were damages damaged. Forty of them never came back. Portland, Oregon had twenty-three million dollars in damages. 303 police vehicles had been vandalized. Minneapolis had 220 buildings damaged, $55 million in damage, like major damages. Buildings were set on fire. 
cars were trampled. People who had nothing to do with it were impacted. That is what riots and like <laughs> here's chaos the, look here, like. Here, here's the somebody holding scoop. a podium for a picture next to the guy with the horns or whatever craziness it was. So I'm an sorry, insurrection those is looting. Uh, it is rioting minus the looting? Is this how it works? Insurrection. Well, is no, because oh, I was like, is that what that means? That doesn't make it. No, right. that's not what it means. I'm making a joke. Oh, yeah. But what I'm saying oh, no. is, you know. Dan's it, brother said the guy who was holding the podium was the same as looting. How do you ra how do you have a conversation with an otherwise intelligent person who honestly believes that if somebody takes a picture oh, with people. Nancy Pelosi's podium, that that is the same as the looting that occurred last summer? How do, you, how do you, moral panic. So so moral panic, I mean, I would actually encourage people to also see if you can find the side-by-side -side comparisons and maybe I can bring some examples mm. at some stage of headlines, right? Mm. So I think it was on Vox and on maybe um, Vice that, you know, you have these side-by-side -side headlines. The same story. Where, where, no, where it's, it's literally, let's say something from last summer yeah. where there were violent riots with looting, with a lot of property, property damage, damage where and people, people were, got it, hurt yes. and died. And then you have what happened at the Capitol and the headlines, just from the headlines, you can see that you are being lied to. Right, because the one is told. framed this way and the other one's framed that way. And if we can only teach people back home to think about things in one way, it's like if you are a if you are coming to an issue with an open mind, a rational mind with some logic, then you should understand that both those things should be treated the same yep. way. Yep. It's the same thing. If you burn down this building or this building, don't do it. You're not so, supposed to be building, burning down the building. In the in the same theme, but in a different subject matter, because we'll have, you know, we're 20 minutes in already. What's up with that? <laughs> are we? So last, Wednesday, same day, the New Hampshire House had their constitutionally required opening day, right, in a parking lot, which, whatever, let's, we're not even going to get into the why we're in a parking lot. So each rep, based, a lot of the reps were individually in their own car. I know uh, Janine Nodder from Merrimack posted, and Lynn Ober was probably with her husband, but these people are literally in a car by themselves, for the most part, in a parking lot, doing their job as elected officials with the car radio tuned to hear the house session. That's how it worked. You could turn in like if, if you were to drive it, right? So they're in their car. These people, most of these people have no idea that anything is even happening in DC, right? Because they're paying attention and doing their job. At some point, somebody made a motion to suspend the rules to allow um, a resolution or something. Keep in mind, most of the people there don't have any idea what's going on in DC. And it's late in the day and you've been in your car and you're cold and you want to go home. And there's a lot of freshmen who don't even understand what suspending What's the rules on, to end, yeah. blah, 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 right? So there's a roll call vote and 35 of the reps voted no. We're not suspending the rules. 33 of them were Republicans, two of them were Democrats. Then, since the rules were suspended, there was a, a motion to uh, have a resolution condemning the violence in D.C., which passed unanimously. Sherry Frost, who's a representative from um, Dover, who's vulgar and vile, um, she who is an actual radical extremist right. and quite dangerous and, and, and advocates for violence and is all very the much time. allowed on Twitter and Facebook and everything has unranked. She can post whatever she wants. Um, she took to Twitter to say, you know, you should be outraged by these thirty-three representatives that voted against. The resolution no actually they didn't first of all it was 35 not 33 but she said but she talked to the two democrats and they explained <laughs> that they made a mistake so that's okay uh, so then even worse than that i see willis griffith who's a ward 11 um state rep right he apologized for voting against the resolution condemning the violence and i sat at my computer and i just thought I i'm gonna get a neck ache just from going like this all the time. First of all, Willis, just just so you know, you didn't vote against the resolution condemning the violence. I know you're confused about what you voted, you voted about. against the rule. You voted against a rule change. Yep. But yet, because you, those like Sherry Frost of Dover come after everybody for things that aren't what she says they are, 
you felt obligated to apologize for doing something that you didn't do. This is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. You've got people who are bullying and terrorizing other people. Look at the Troy oh, oh, police okay. chief. Can, can, can we just talk about like okay, my, sure. my, my bullying session this weekend? So imagine my consternation when I wake up on Sunday morning and my Google alerts are all like, uh, I'm in an article about white nationalism and anti-government extremism. Maybe we could call those words, I am uh, pro-peace, pro-liberty, pro-individualism, which pretty much means I'm anti-slavery and pro-mankind. So, you know, before we all get confused. But it is Zandra Rice Hawkins, who's another vile person. So Zandra Rice Hawkins from Granite State Progress, uh, this lady moved to New Hampshire to try and make it more progressive and expends all her time trying to make Being free paid staters to do that. She uh, gets look paid. Bad. She's been paid, She's paid all along. She's paid by Soros. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go listen to the Podesta files. So so there's, there's a genuine part of me that just kind of wants to go, uh, Zandra Rice Hawkins loves pedophilia. Right, because it, so totally, every time someone's going to well, call me. Well, she does me, have children, so that would make sense, right? So, that's about so, the so, you know, logic so, people So use. basically, uh, w what I suspect this was, because it's kind of, I mean, it's really attacking Chris Sununu in some ways, but, you know, it's, it's very cleverly worded to sort of, uh, they catch groups up. Yes. She knows I'm litigious. I did look at it. I had a lawyer look at it. I'm like, eh, can I sue? We'll see. Uh, but really the note she's trying to strike is just that uh, uh, everyone's armed. We're uh, dangerous. The, the word armed, dangerous, and threatening appears, yeah, yeah. you know, a hundred times yep. in this. I'm exaggerating. Well, you're probably a domestic um, terrorist because that's alarm the, bells, the word of the week. Violent rhetoric, blah -de blah blah So just categorically for folks back home and anyone who's confused, I am 100% peaceful. I am anti-government. I do not think that position is extreme unless it's extreme how the founding father has founded the nation and the fact that America, unlike the rest of the world, actually does believe in individual liberty, in freedom of speech, in freedom of choice for your life, right? So, I mean, if that's extreme, then I guess that part of me is extreme. Uh, I am not a white nationalist. I know, that one cracks me up. Uh, I was an anti-apartheid activist in South Africa. Uh, I voted for Nelson Mandela. So I, you know, I do I find would, this yeah. like super, super, super insulting. Uh, but I also don't lose sleep about it because she's not worth it. Uh, and so, they're not worth it. And this messaging is not worth it. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe I'll write some SEO stuff that ties all these people's <laughs> names to pedophilia. And we'll see how you like well, that. Well, so another example here in New Hampshire is out in Troy, small town of Troy. The police chief, who was a Trump supporter, because he's allowed to have his opinions. Um, he went to the to the rally, the protest. He did not participate in any of the any of the, the anything illegal. He went to a protest, as is his right. Now the town of Troy has closed their public offices because they are receiving threats. The selectmen and city employees, threats of execution. Like crazy, crazy people threatening because their chief of police was at the, this rally. And I thought, wait a minute, I thought it was the Trump people that were the violent ones. No, I, I'm see, confused who's threatening the town of Troy then so, if the Trump supporter guy is at the center of it. It can't be the pro-Trump people that are threatening the town of Troy because the town of Troy said he has every right to go to a protest if he wants. So, so can I, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, um, and, and I'm going to assume this is going to be unpopular, so bring on the hate mail, right? When, when I was growing up in South Africa and working Just like mail that, us about anything. Mm -hmm. Manstalk at gmail.com. Nobody ever mails us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of, one of the phrases that came out of the anti-apartheid movement by a radicalized group called the Pan-African Congress, the PAC, they were very communist. And their slogan was, one settler, one bullet. So their slogan Jesus. was pretty much, kill the whiteies, right? So, so that's the milieu I grew up in. And that's not really a good feeling. No. Because you don't just want to be judged, especially if you're working with a group of people to try and solve a problem right. like apartheid was, right? So one settler, one bullet. You're allowed to say that. But on the other hand, now in America, apparently you're not allowed to say things like, all lives matter. So... You know, Black Lives Matter, 
but all lives matter. That's what I believe, right? Like I believe in peace and I think we're all equally yep. important. And I was like, wow, if we live in a world where you can say one settler won the bullet and that's allowed, but you're not allowed to say all lives matter, that's not allowed, then I think we really do need to stop and put our little thinking caps on and be like, what is going on? Moral You're panic. being manipulated <laughs> and there's moral panic. Yep. So everyone, take a friggin' yep. breather. Did you just swear? Freaking. Just, oh, freaking. I'm like, holy cow. You're allowed that's to say a first? It. No, I was like, wow, that's a first? I'm the one with no, the bad mouth. No, I mean, mouth. I'm not allowed to swear. So, um, so can I tell you yes. about my parking yes. ticket, too? So I have a question, and we could do this on air. So I got a parking ticket at 2133, so that's 930 last Tuesday, for parking too close to a corner. Okay. First of all, I didn't know parking enforcement takes place at 933 at night. Yeah. So I get it. Uh, and I'm like, okay, fine. So yesterday I go online and I'm like, let me just pay the ticket because I'm annoyed it and because <laughs> before it doubles and then, you know, next thing you know, they're going to round me up, yep. right? Um, which they're going to do probably anyway, but mark my words. So I go online and it says on the ticket, it may take up to 24 hours for the information to be there. So it's a week later it's and, and I, I can't pay my ticket. So now my question to Mayor Craig is, do <laughs> I have to pay this ticket? Because first of all, I'm non-essential, so I don't feel like I really should have to pay it. And second of all, if I spent the time to go online to do the right do thing it? and it's not there, then I think you should void the ticket. Thank you. There you go. I don't disagree. <laughs> um, one plus, uh, two things. Next week, the week of the 17th, I guess, whatever next week is, Christmas trees. Put your dead Christmas trees to the curb next week and only next week if you want the city to pick them up. And I just wanted to remind people that McIntyre Ski Area is open. They have tubing. They have skiing and whatnot. Um, you can get more information about them at McIntyre Ski Area. That's M-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E Ski Area dot com. But that's a great little thing we have in New Han right here in Manchester that I don't think everybody realizes. Come and, of book. course, buy my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, where you can learn that I am just an awesome person who <laughs> doesn't need to be called names. That's all we got. Um, hopefully, we have a more peaceful week and a little less crazy. Uh, we'll see how that works out. And meanwhile, we'll be back next week with more fun topics. More to fun. About. And now that they banned me on Facebook, find me on Twitter because yep. I'm just going to go all out there till I get banned there as well. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace out.